the difference between us and God is a matter of the choices and consequences of our choices. It's not our divine nature, which we already possess. And we, we didn't make the choice to be in the relationship, but they did. So from all eternity, prior to becoming human, they were fully divine. However, they left the fullness of that unity. They left the fullness of divinity in, in the terms of, of uh, Philippians. Christ emptied himself of the fullness of his divinity mm -hmm. to become a human being. And so during that time, Christ was merely divine, but not fully divine. Okay. So by merely, let, let's talk about that for a minute. So merely divine means, um, I, I guess, yeah. Where's the line between merely divine and fully divine? So we possess all of the divine properties, but not to their fullness, to their, in their fullness or to their fullest. So I have knowledge, but I don't have a fullness of knowledge. I have I power, see. but I don't have a fullness of power. Okay. So I have these. And, and so some of these properties I have in potentiality, but it's still a divine property to have rationality as a divine property. So then would you say that we all have mere divinity? Absolutely. It's okay, I see human beings to be of divine nature. Now, what actualizes our divine nature is when we choose to love one another. When we choose to love one another as Jesus loved us, as I said before, we've been invited into this relationship, right? And when I we see. enter into the relationship, we will be everything that they are, without exception. We will. So the idea is, is that we have these properties of divinity, but through covenant, they are inviting us into the unified relationship that allows for, let's say, full divinity because we accept and then enter into that proper relationship with them and with one another. Yeah, we, the relationship deifies us just as it exalts God. I mean, um, Christ said that he had glorified the Father and the, the Father, that the Father had glorified him. They mutually glorify each other. Mm -hmm. Well, we're glorified. We, we seek to glorify God as well. However minimal, you know, our, our contribution to God's glory, that's what we seek to do. We want to increase his glory and increase the light that he has. But we all, by doing so, we grow in the light ourselves until we have a fullness of light. So there are some very, you know, there are common technical terms, and one of them is fullness. Um, you know, the Pleroma in Greek. And so the Doctrine and Covenants uses the term of fullness of divinity <laughs> and a fullness of, of, you know, so what Christ lacked when he was human was a fullness. And when he became fully divine, he had a fullness of divinity. Wow. And then in section 93, he turns around and says, you also, and then he talks about us receiving a fullness of divinity just as he has it. I give a chart comparing DNC 93 um, and and show that what everything that's true of Jesus, he says is also true of us. Okay, mm -hmm. so we exist like Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost. We've all existed from all eternity as individuals. The difference in our status is that is that we haven't chosen to fully love in each moment where we could. And so he's inviting us and teaching us how to love. The purpose of life is to come here so that we can learn how to love each other fully, so that we can fully participate in the divine relationship and participate in the fullness of everything that God has. And that is that is what we might call the celestial order. Is exactly. that, that in like love looks like the order of the celestial relationship. Exactly. The unity that that creates Zion <laughs> is is a loving relationship. And there's, you know, we talk about the list of things that we do to show that we love each other, we don't steal from each other, we don't kill each other, etc. That's an animal world. But if we love each other, we also take the coat off of our own backs and put it on the person that we love when they're called. When they ask us for directions, we don't merely point. We walk the full mile with them to show them where it is. Yeah. And so what Jesus is teaching in the Sermon on the Mount is the is how to be a is fully realizing how to love each other in a way that God loves us, to love as he loved us. Mm-hmm. And so I think that this is really the center of Joseph Smith's theology and everything that he put together, all the way from the concept of Zion to 
to the concept of, of exaltation, okay, mm-hmm. it's, it's this notion of having a relationship such that we demonstrate our love for each other fully, and in so doing, we glorify each other. And we're fully glorified in God. We share fully in his glory and everything that he, when I say everything that he is, I mean, all the knowledge that he has, we possess all the power he has, we possess. And the entire, all of our, all of our potentialities realized to their fullest. No, because there's no fullest. We will continue to grow for all eternity. (laughs) I see. (laughs) If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want more content, including the podcast, go to thoughtful-faith.com. Thanks for watching.